Hi, I'm Pastor Rob, and this is the Pastor's Office. Today, we're going to ask ourselves a question. Are you living right on the edge, or are you taking up too much space? Let's get to it. So back in the day in the motocross world, <clears throat> there was a, a gear company called No Fear. And No Fear came out with stickers for a while that asked that very question. And it mainly more of a statement that said, if you're not living on the edge, then you're taking up too much space. Well, I want to look at that at two different angles here. Number one angle being basically what it's saying. Living on the edge or taking up too much space. This society we live in, is very geared toward instant gratification and living on the edge. There's a lot of extreme sports out there. A lot of people that I know are big time into racing or into football or a lot of other more action type sports. And with that, hey, it's a good thing. You can live on the edge. But let's look a little farther at it. What about our spiritual journey? In your spiritual journey, are you also living on the edge? Because if, we'll say you're a motocross rider, first time you took to the track, whether it be as a young kid on a 50, or whether you picked it up a little bit later, maybe on a 125 or a 250, somewhere along the way, you took baby steps riding. Um, you hit kind of a, a ripply, rough section. You got a little nervous. As you got a little bit better on you were able to uh, tackle some of the shorter tabletops, hey, maybe even a double now and then. But after a few years, you were able to launch over that triple, maybe even scrub a little bit, do a little bit of style. What about the same thing in football? How hard did you hit when you first started? Um, where are you now? In basketball, did you immediately drive the lane or maybe did you learn how to dribble the ball first? We all started somewhere. We all conquered that fear because we knew we had to conquer that fear to get better. And if we were not getting better, someone else was going to get better and we were going to get beat. So we pushed and pushed and pushed ourselves to get that a little bit farther. So back to our spiritual walk. Do we figure that we can go out and witness to somebody and know all the answers right off the bat? That seems to be where we're at. And then if we try to witness to someone, we get a little freaked out when we don't know the answer to their questions. Um, we get awful nervous. But why don't we put in that thought and that time like we did into any type of a sport? Start out with the baby steps. Take someone with you. Go out and speak to someone. And if someone asks you a question and you don't know the answer, I'll tell you right now what the answer to that question is. The answer is, I don't know. Be straight up and honest with people. If you're witnessing, if you're trying to promote your church, if you're trying to promote God in someone's life, trying to show what Jesus has done for you and who Jesus is to you, the first thing you do is the baby steps. Understand that you don't know everything. None of us do. But build and build and build. And the more we do, the less afraid we will be. We will have that no fear type of an attitude. It will make a huge difference as we go forward in our ministries. So if we think of that, there's also a flip side to it. When we're always living on the edge in that gratification society that we're in, we have to be very careful. And this is even a stronger thing than that action sports and going out and witnessing sort of a thing. And this is building hedges, building boundaries, building fences, building walls, however you want to use the, the metaphor. But it's staying away from the edge. When we think about the things we do in life, there's some very few people that try to have a hedge around their life. We think 
here's a sin and here's doing right. Somewhere in the middle is where I am. But usually we try to get as close to that sin without actually stepping in as possible. Why don't we just stay away from the sin? If drinking is a problem, don't go to the convenience store that sells the alcohol. Don't go to the bar if you've got a drinking problem, if you're trying to quit. Stay away from it. Any sin that we are committing, stay away from it. If you have a pornography problem or if you have a sexual addiction, try to distance yourself from people that you would have that attraction to. Try to keep yourself in a bubble for better choice of words. Instead of looking at the Bible or asking people in the know the question of, well, is this a sin? Or maybe it's not and maybe I can get away with it and God really won't have a problem with it. How about instead we go with Scripture where that scripture says, avoid all appearance of evil. It doesn't say avoid all evil. Avoid all appearance of evil. Anything that could appear to someone to be a sin, let's try to stay away from it. Let's try to stay way back from that sin. Instead of getting right up close to it and saying, well, I know my limits. The Bible says over and over and over to avoid drunkenness. Speaks very harshly on drunkenness. But it doesn't say we can't consume any alcohol. But here's a thought. Where are your tolerances between having a drink and drunkenness? Where does that alcohol start to affect you? Instead of trying to figure out what that limit is, if we don't take the first one, we won't be there. And that's with any sin in our lives, the sin of excess. But if we don't start it, that excess won't happen. So those are a few things I just wanted to run past you guys. Kind of make you think a little bit of if we're going to be out there and we're going to try to witness to others, let's do it on the edge. Let's do it wholehearted. But we need to start with the baby steps. We need to practice along the way. And instead of trying to get as close as we can to sinning but not falling over the edge, let's stay back from that edge. Let's stay in a safe zone when it comes to our, our purity, our holiness with God. Let's try to stay back away from that edge so that we don't have that potential to fall over the edge. I want to thank you for your time, and may God bless each and every one of you.